When you talk about a V4 engine, you don't have to think just about the engine. Having a V4 engine means you have to build a completely different bike. Okay, so different chassis, different weight distribution, different parts on the bike. But we don't. We have no idea if it's faster or not at the moment. So we should. We have to build the bike, build the engine, build the bike, check if it's faster. Yamaha's history with competitive racing is complicated. Although the company won many competitions over a decade ago, its races in recent years have been very disappointing. To fix this, engineers at Yamaha are now developing a more powerful engine that promises to give racers a more competitive advantage in MotoGP's upcoming season. The announcement was so shocking that it stunned the entire industry, raising many questions. Why did it take them over a decade to fix this issue? And how do they plan on changing everything with this engine? Join us as we explore the shocking details and exciting stories behind Yamaha's new engine. Yamaha's unexpected announcement came on January 12th. After over a decade of endless disappointments in MotoGP's competitive racing scene, Yamaha's technical director Max Bartolini publicly announced the development of a V4 engine during the famous Tokyo Auto Salon event. Compared to America's most powerful bike engine, the Jim USA's 135 twin cam, Max Bartolini promises that Yamaha's V4 engine would have a much higher RPM range, a more compact size, and better cooling efficiency. This wild promise came at a time when the company's racing team had been struggling for years to catch up with leading giants like Honda and Suzuki. And while Yamaha today is known as the racing company struggling to catch up with higher competitors, a brief look at the company's past shows us something quite interesting. Believe it or not, from 2014 to 2010, Yamaha was the company winning all championships. They pulled this off with the powerful inline-four engine that performed better than the competition. With this engine, Yamaha dominated the scene for over half a decade. But after six years of endless victories, the company became too confident in their old engine and failed to make upgrades when they could afford to. As a result, they started losing a lot of races and were quickly overtaken by the competition. While other companies kept upgrading their engines for better power and efficiency, Yamaha kept relying on their old inline four systems for future races, leading to many devastating losses spanning over a decade. Now, with their new V4 engine set to be revealed in the coming months, it seems Yamaha is ready to dominate the tracks once again. At the same time, however, it leaves fans wondering why it took the company so long to learn from its mistakes. To answer the question, we have to first explore how the company once dominated the scene, why it fell from grace, and how it plans on making a comeback with its new V4 engine. So, without further ado, let's get to it. A good turning and the good agility of the year before, but the bike improved a lot the engine improved a lot. The story behind Yamaha's new engine goes way back to early 2002. MotoGP, the biggest motorcycle competition, was at its peak of popularity. It was a place where multiple companies advertised their best engines through highly competitive motorcycle racing. Many heavy hitters like Honda, Suzuki and Aprilia dominated the scene, winning almost every championship along the way. Each company had special races representing them, and every time they won, it showed the world what the companies were capable of. Every victory led to significant increases in public sales and recognition. On the other hand, every loss meant less recognition in the general market, and one of those losing companies was Yamaha, a company known for using less powerful vehicles while still hoping to best the competition. But this time, something unexpected was about to happen. You see, Honda, at the time, was the leading contender for most of these competitions, and the professional racer representing them was the famous Valentino Rossi. The bike he used in most of these races was the fast and powerful Honda RC2 111 4, and it ran on a custom engine far superior to those used by the competition. Yamaha, at the time, was represented by Max Biaghi, and though he was very good at racing, he often struggled to keep up with other racers due to how inferior his engine was. On the other hand, Valentino Rossi was already well recognized in the world of motorcycle racing. Since 1997, he had won almost every competition for the various companies he represented, and it seemed there was nothing left to achieve as a professional racer. Rossi was always on top, even among the premier class, 
and though he loved the sport, his endless victories meant racing was no longer as exciting as it used to be. Wanting to face a much bigger challenge, Rossi knew he had to make a difficult choice, one which might end his career as a professional racer. So in late 2003, after winning two world championships with Honda, Rossi announced his decision to leave his current team and sign a new deal with Yamaha. I'm very sad also because in Ducati I find a lot of good people. We had great times together, he said. Yamaha, a company that had been struggling to compete for many years, seemed like a bad decision, no doubt. But there was a twist, the inline four engine. Many fans weren't happy with Rossi's sudden decision. And just as he predicted, joining the new company was very challenging. For one, the bike he used with Honda provided the highest level of power and acceleration, running on a powerful V5 engine that was easy to handle, but much faster than most other engines in the competition. Now, he had to settle for Yamaha's less impressive YZR Moan that ran on a weak inline four engine that lacked the raw power and acceleration to match Honda's V5. This meant Rossi would have to win all his future races with a much weaker bike. And that wasn't the worst part. The much bigger problem Rossi had to deal with was that Yamaha didn't have a huge budget like Honda. Simply put, there was no money available to upgrade the weak engine. Because of this, it was almost impossible for Rossi to make sharp turns on the track without crashing. It also didn't help that the engine was prone to various other hazards like sudden breakdowns and overheating. These were problems that could have been easily fixed with Honda's deep pockets, but with Yamaha, it was a much different story. For most people, it was clear at this point that Rossi had made a very bad decision to join the company, or so we thought. Contrary to what was expected, things got interesting in the weeks leading to the next major competition. Rossi practiced with his new bike every day and provided the feedback needed by the engineers to make it better. Every day, the engineers followed him to practice and took notes on how the engine performed. While the money was not available to directly upgrade the engine, thanks to his many years of experience, Rossi suggested various ways the engineers could improve things. So with his help, the engineers were able to optimize the bike's setup, chassis, suspension and electronics to harvest more power from the engine. Even though they were at a disadvantage, they worked hard at this for several weeks. And then the big day came on April 18, 2004, during the South African Grand Prix at Welcome. That day, Valentino Rossi shocked the world by winning the championship, starting a new era of victories for the lesser-known company. This led to higher sales and recognition for Yamaha, and Rossi would go on to win many more races and championships for the company up until late 2009, with Yamaha's inline-four engines. 